Okay, so um, I showed you this uh, field tech um, arbitrary function signal generator on a video earlier, and I said that I wasn't probably going to do a review on it till I knew a little more about it. And I started looking online, and there must be half a dozen reviews of this thing that are all pretty good, and they cover most of the functions of what this thing has. Um, so really, there's not a whole lot I can add to that. But what I do want to do is I want to show you know make a couple comments. Comment number one is even though this does have an AM and an FM waveform, they are just arbitrary waveform programs. In other words, this generator is not physically capable of doing a regular amplitude modulated or frequency modulated signal. Now it does have um, in the software uh, kind of a way to do that where you can use your um, frequency counter as a as a modulation input but once again it's very awkward it doesn't work very well um, it's really not something I would use for an RF signal generator other than just generating a uh, just a carrier tone that's it if I just wanted to have an RF carrier uh, as soon as you start playing with modulation it just doesn't, you know, the, the AM and FM programs that are in there are just arbitrary waveform programs so you can't modify anything about the modulation and if you use the uh, amplitude shift keying or the frequency shift keying because there is uh, um, ASK and FSK in the software I just it, it never worked very well for me so and you would need an external signal generator to generate that tone you know like an audio generator or something so kinda messy what I do want to talk about though is uh, something that was brought up on some of the other videos I tested this and it in fact is an issue if you look up here I currently have this thing plugged in uh, to the outlet and if I take my probe and just kind of stick it in in there right now see where I'm at and I'm on AC volts if I take this and just touch it I'm not even turned on and I just touch it here there's 120 volts right there um, now <laughs> the reason being is this thing uses a switch mode power supply and there's most likely a bypass capacitor in there now what I didn't test is what the leakage on that would be um, but we might be able to test that um, so let's see if we can okay do that. I have the camera focused on my um, 1655 um, isolated variac and you know something that's not a very often used function of this is this actually has an AC leakage probe where you can actually measure the leakage current um, on your grounds okay so I have this set to hot leakage so it's going to test the leakage reference with respect to the hot lead okay and down here is your leakage in uh, microamps okay so anything in the green is a safe amount of leakage okay anything beyond that is dangerous and can cause would cause uh, you know now that doesn't mean you won't feel a tingle or you can't get shocked from this it just means that it's low enough current that it's generally accepted that that's not going to be lethal to you so all you do is you flip you hold this little spring-loaded switch and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to touch right there and you'll see that there is in fact leakage current in this okay so here we go you see that moving up about a hundred about a hundred microamps of leakage okay when I look there just a little under so it's very low and if I check with respect to the common terminal 
about the same, a little bit less, about 50. So it is a safe leakage current. So this is not considered a dangerous machine, but it may not be dangerous to us. But what that's what that is indicating is that this will be dangerous to the device that you're testing. Think about it. A hundred hundred microamperes of current at 120 volts. Okay. Um, my wife there had asked me a question there. But anyhow, what this will do is 120 volts AC at 100 microamps is going to any static sensitive device that you connect this to. So you say you connect this to a radio and you're picking out picking off the uh, IF section or something, you know. And, you know, there's a lot of MOSFETs and things in there. Man, you get across static sensitive stuff with that, you are going to completely trash uh, that circuitry. So, as this thing sits, I highly recommend not using this um, on RF equipment. Now, if you want to connect this to maybe the input of your amplifier for, you know, uh, the, your receiver is going to have a transformer. Uh, odds of damaging it are not real high, but of course, some of these some of these receivers out here have JFET um, preamp stages and things that are real static sensitive. Once again, um, just be aware of that. Unmodified, this could damage the equipment that you're working on that you're connecting it to, and you could feel a little tingle if you touch this and touch you know a chassis of something else um, I probably you probably would get insane amounts of hum and noise um, if you tried to connect this to a hot chassis receiver that's not on an isolation transformer and even with the isolation transformer possibly you could still get all kinds of hum and noise so no isolation on this not very good for testing anything in my opinion now, what can we do about that? Well, there's a few things you can do. You can connect this to its own isolation transformer. Better yet, you could remove the switch mode power supply that's in there and replace it with a linear power supply, okay? That uses a traditional transformer, a bridge rectifier, a capacitor, and a linear voltage regulator. And then you have total isolation. Um, and then you put a three prong cord on there and put the ground prong to ground and reference it to these output terminals, okay? Or if you want to leave it floating, you can just leave it floating, okay? Uh, a less safe one would be there is a safety capacitor in there that's most likely causing that leakage current. I haven't even taken this apart, but most likely if you remove that, that would remove that issue but at the expense of safety and also it could cause you know you don't have any surge protection for the power supplies that not a good idea um, I just wanted to put that out there this is just a quick little video for that um, what what I will probably do is I will probably put a linear power supply in here there's plenty of room I, I mean you can feel this thing's empty so uh, I might just do that. Again, what good is this thing in the first place? Well, it, it does put out a lot of different signals. The signals are pretty clean for what they are. And really nice if you want to use this as a modulation source for your better, uh, some of your better test equipment. You know, like I have the HP uh, 8657. I can use this in the external modulation port and I can create all kinds of modulation signals to either AM or FM modulate something. For instance, I could set this to 19 kilohertz and take the 19 kilohertz out of that and put it into my FM modulation, uh, external modulation of my uh, 8657, and then that could actually simulate a uh, pilot, you know, carrier pilot tone uh, for checking a multiplex circuit to see if the pilot circuit's working. So there's a lot of different things you can use it for. Um, this is nice for just generating an audio signal if I want to just, you know, instead of using my expensive Rigel signal generator, 
I can use this one and just you know this is a cheap thing that I can use but I want to make it safe first I would hate to connect this to the input of one of my more expensive pieces of test equipment and have that uh, leakage current damage a component so or to cause some unknown noise that then I'm going to be troubleshooting my test equipment instead of troubleshooting the problem in the device I'm testing. So quick five minute video I just want to get it posted up there real quick to give you guys uh, a little warning of it if you don't already know um, and uh, when I do something to fix this I'll put up a little follow-up video to uh, show you and we can go from there. All right, thank you guys. And by the way, any cheap test equipment that has switch mode power supplies, keep that in mind because that's this is not just limited to this. I'm sure there's a lot of this stuff coming out there that's cheap that's got this same problem. So you guys have a wonderful day. Um, hope all is well with all of you. And till next time, take care.